we're going to be super creative here where we're going to have like an accordion effect and as you hover over it the accordions almost like open up i call it accordion effect because that's kind of what it is you have image you have a bit of text and when you hover as you can see over here the text will move and you could have other items present like buttons videos whatever you want in there now i was going to do this using the accordion with elemental but i started to struggle with trying to get it to work I could have used sliders as well, but I found that I didn't want to start to go down the road of using templates, mainly because I'm trying to keep this relatively simple. Now, the method I'm going to use here might not work for everyone, and you might say, well, we don't really want to do it this way, but trust me, it does work. And all we're going to be doing is using columns. We're going to have some CSS code in the section and the column. And the idea is, is that when you hover over the column, it expands, but also the stuff within that column appears. So we might have an image. And you hover over it, as you can see, and then the words and a button. You don't have to have a button, by the way. I've just put it in there to show you the possibility. So let's get down to it. And this is really simple if you follow these steps. Step one, we're going to have a section. Now, the key bit about this is I would say that if you want to have a full width, you can do. If you want to go for a box width and for, I'm going to go with about 900, just so you can see everything on the screen here. I'm also going to set a minimum height of about, we'll go with 400 for now. OK, um, again, you could go for fit to screen, whatever you want. Just bear in mind the size of your images, your content. And you might have to tinker a little bit with some of the left and right margins and stuff I'm going to be doing here. So really, really simple. We have a width and we have a minimum height. Now, then, when it comes to the column position, I have the option of stretch top, middle or bottom. I'm going to go for stretch. The reason being is when we stick the items in, you're going to want it to have to stretch, OK? Um, otherwise, what will happen is you start to get a bit of an issue with the text. I'm going to make the vertical alignment middle. I'm also going to say the overflow is hidden. If you don't do that, you might get text and words creeping out. Same with images, but just have it as hidden. And I'm also going to stretch the section as well. Sometimes I did not have to do this and it worked fine. Sometimes I did. OK, I'm not entirely sure why. But I've got stretch, middle, hidden, and then stretch section as well. That's all we're going to do for the layout. Now, we might as well stick some code in as well while we're here. So we go to advanced and we go to custom CSS. And down here, I'm going to drop some code in. Now, this code, you'll notice, is referring to .acc item. ACC item is going to be the ID or the class name we give to the column. Because what we're going to be telling it is that when you go over to this, and you kind of hover over it, it's going to flex in terms of sizing. If you want to mess around with these values where I've got flex one and eight, please go ahead and be my guest. And you'll see what happens when you put flex one in the bottom down here. It hardly moves. You put flex 20 and it's going to go a little bit too far. Eight worked really, really well. And if you're imitating what I do here, I would say go with these numbers. But that code in there is for the section and it's telling it that when you hover over the column, it will now expand one by one. Right, now let's do our very first column. Now we know it's called ACC item, so we might as well pick that up. We go to our very first column, we go to advanced, and I'm gonna put the class name there of ACC item. An instant you can almost see it kind of moved and shifted a little bit there as soon as I did that, don't worry yet. The next thing we'll do, before we add in further CSS and a bit more styling, we're gonna drop in the background image. You will have to do this individually per column, of the accordion, but it's relatively simple. We just make sure we're in the column, go to style, go to background type, and I'm now gonna pick one of the images, okay? Now, the image is kind of going all the way across, but that's because we haven't set it yet. We'll go with center, center. I'm gonna go with scrolled, no repeat, and the size is going to be a cover. Now, at this point, the image is gonna look a little bit weird, but please don't forget, eventually we're gonna have more accordions coming and then the image size will adjust accordingly. So don't worry too much about how this is looking. If you want to go ahead, but then you just end up tinkering again with it. So I'm happy with that at the moment. Now, before we continue or do anything else, I'm gonna to start to drop in the headers because this is really, really important when it comes to sizing. I'm gonna drop in a header like so. And I'm going to call this header the first tab, something like that. And I'm now going to change the styling to be white. And I'm just going to shrink the size down to be something like that. 
you would obviously be a bit more clinical with your poppins and your latter and your Montserrats and stuff like that. I've just gone for standard because I'm just showing you how this works. Now we're going to go back to the column and now adjust it a little bit. Let's go to layout. I'm going to say the vertical alignment is bottom. So it's now put it at the bottom. And this is why I said do the header. Got the header in. Now you can see what happens. If you start doing the column, you might think, oh yeah, I've done it. But actually it's now gone to the top, which is not what we want. So I'm going to go with the bottom. And I'm going to say the horizontal alignment is centered. Now I'm going to click that uh, header. I'm going to go over to advanced. Okay. I'm going to go to transform. And I'm now going to rotate this 90 degrees. So we're going to hit rotate. And I'm going to go with uh, 90. But we're actually going to do minus 90. And the reason it's disappeared is because we haven't set the anchor points. So I'm going to say go to the left. And it's still not visible. Stay with me on this, okay? And then I'm going to go with the Y anchor point like that. Just to reiterate, we added in a header, okay? We made sure the column over here is a vertical bottom and a horizontal of center. I went back to my text. I then did the um, rotate of minus 90 to make it go that way. And then down here, I've set my X anchor point like that on the left and my Y anchor point in the middle. Now you will notice it is quite bang up against the border at the moment. This is where you can now go to the advanced tab for the, uh, you could go with the header. And I could, if I want, just do something like this. I'm going to put in 15 just to move it away a little bit. And that's so far okay. And I'm just going to double check that by doing that. That's looking okay. If you want to have it more away from the border edge, you'd increase the left margin there. So far, that is okay, but there is one key thing you do need to do to that rotated header now. Sorry, yeah, the rotated header. We've actually got to call it rotated header because the idea is, is that when we hover on the column, that rotated header will disappear. Now, you could add in some CSS code whereby when you hover, it kind of does that, which I found a little bit glitchy and it didn't work very well for me. So the way I've done it is you got that header, and when you hover, that one will disappear and the header where it's now horizontal will appear. So I'm going to call this rotated header. All right, you can call it whatever you want, but that's keeping it really, really simple at the moment. I am now going to duplicate that header, right? And I'm going to call this header a straight header. Is that right? Yes, yeah, straight header. Now, the transform effect for this, we're going to completely take off. In terms of the left axes, I think I can get away with moving it back again to be zero. Now, there is one tip I do want to give you, though, that I discovered after I started working on this. If I go to the navigator and we have the header, I'm just going to call, the, I'm just going to double click this one, okay, and call this the, I'm going to call it R header because it's the rotated header. And then we have the second where we duplicated it and made it straight, and I'm going to call it S header. If you have the S header after the rotated header, it pushes the rotated header up. And I actually want the rotated header to be down. So all I did rather than mess whoops, all I did rather than messing around with the left, right, up, top, bottom margin, I just pick it up like that. And what that now does is, even though it's now pushed that um, straight header further up, if you now look at it, it's now slightly higher, that's okay because I don't want it to be near the bottom when you're looking at the, the proper slide or the image. I'm okay with that. Now, there is one other thing I do want to mention is that depending on your type of image, um, the image might be quite bright and you're not going to see the white lettering if you've gone for a white font. But the code we're going to add in for the column, okay, and we haven't added it in yet and we are going to add it in, you can actually add a background overlay. So now that we've done this, Let's go and drop in our code into the column. I mean, that's, that's, that's all you need to do. And my one tip, though, is that where I've called it straight header, if you were to also drop in, say, a button, like so, so you can have a button present as well, call the button straight header as well. Basically, call all of them straight header. So you're not having to write multiple bits of CSS code. Straight header. And the code we're going to add in will work for, we'll leave the button in for now. Okay, we'll leave the button in for now, just so you can see how it looks. And that will call it straight header as well. There we go, straight header. Yep, right. Now into the column, we're going to drop in the code, which will not only add in a background overlay, 
It will also say that when you hover, hide that one and show those. And when you're not hovering over it, they disappear. And this one shows the vertical one. Okay. I've used this code so many times in my videos and you will, you should recognize it by now if you've been following. Um, so here you go. I've added in a code. This is saying that the straight header, which was this one, is the opacity is zero. It's got 0.5 transition as it appears, but the opacity is zero. From the off, you can't see it. When you hover, the straight header becomes one. So the, the text, the button, if you added in a video and you called it straight header, they all become visible. When you hover, the rotate header, which is up here, disappears. Therefore, when you're not hovering, it is already visible. And then I've also said over here, um, the background overlay, um, I mean, you can see what's happened as soon as I put the code in, it's gone black. So it's got, it has a black color and the opacity is 0.6. Watch what happens if I drop this to be uh, zero, it's gone. If I change it to one, it will go to pure black. Let's leave it to 0.6. So I'm saying add in an overlay of 0.6. You could do this on the column from the off, but I found if you did that when you added in your background image, it started applying it to the text as well, which got me really, really utterly confused. So I just do it like this. And then when you hover, the background color is still black, but I've now said the opacity is zero. So it goes from a 0 0.6 to no overlay anymore now. And when I hover, look, you can see what's happening here. Now the rotate header, is not changing. I think I might have given that the wrong name. So I've just got to double check I gave that the right name. I've called it rotated header. So let me just get rid of that. There you go. Right. So there we go. It's rotate header, not rotated header. So when I now hover over this, can you see that the wording disappears this and the, the background overlay changes and the word we get the wording appear here now. So that's all working okay. Now there is one thing I've got to quickly add in here that I forgot to do, and this is actually important, okay? If I go to my navigator and go back to my header, if you go to the CSS code for the header for both of them, okay, I'm gonna put in selector white space, no, white space, no wrap. That stops the text overlapping because I have found that sometimes the first tab, the wording overlaps, and it's really annoying when it does that. And I'm saying with the rotated header, okay, just make sure you've got this CSS code in here as well. Don't worry, in the description over there, I will put step by step, okay, everything you need to do. So I will say, right, you've now got to do 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 do. Well, I won't go step by step, but I'll tell you, this goes in your section, this goes in your column, make sure you name your classes like this, whatnot, and you should be okay. So now we have this effect. So I've gone and duplicated it. And I've put in a different image for the first, second, third tab. Uh, for the fourth, I think I've done the fourth tab as well. I haven't changed the wording. But the idea is, is that you can have a header word here and have different header words here. A bit more expansive, maybe. Remember, though, there is no wrap. So think about how much wording you're going to put in. But the beauty about doing it this way is because it's a column, if you want to add in a button that goes somewhere, you can. If you don't want to have a button, you take it out. And look, if I go to the third tab, the second tab, the third, the first, let's go to the fourth one there, you've got different images going on. And this can work really, really well with some simple CSS code for your section, your column, and then you're adding in your items. You just got to make sure you put the right class name in. Now, how does this look on the mobile? Because that's always the burning question. Now, when you go to mobile, it's going to look pretty cramped up. And this is what you sometimes have to think about in terms of this effect that we did here. Do you still want to do that for the mobile? And I would actually say it's not always a great effect to do here because it's not working really well. So I would say that um, wherever we've got the CSS code we've added in, you do the at media and you might say up to maximum width 500 pixels, it will do that. When you haven't done that, sorry, if you do at media, it will only show it for below 500 pixels. Everything beyond that, that's where it will switch back to being maybe full column. So don't forget these are columns, right? By the way, but look here, we haven't set out a, we haven't set out what the measurements are. But when you get to the mobile view, you can put in um sorry, let me just do it again. You can go over here and put in a hundred. Like that. And as long as your section and your column, you've um CSS out the fact that the code is in there to so at media, you know, the bracket max width 500 pixel. 
you won't get this effect and you'll now have your individual items, which might work for you or you might switch to having a proper accordion. But for the desktop, this is, for me, I think a really cool, simplistic way of having items. I mean, you could have product categories, menu pages, um, blog categories, galleries, loads, loads of different things where you're now showing a bit of a snippet with an image. I mean, I've gone, look, I mean, okay, look, let's just go for this column over here, right? Let's go to advanced. Let's go to custom CSS. And I've said the opacity is 0.6. Let's drop it to 0.3 maybe. Okay, so now it's not as dark as it was before. So you get a bit more of the image styling there. And I will let you know that if you were to, uh, let me go to Navigator, let's get rid of some of these extra duplicated ones I added in. Let's just duplicate that one though. No, let's duplicate that and let's duplicate that. You are now gonna get a bit more of the, um, see more of the image. And of course you may wanna adjust the sizing that we've got here. So whereas like with this first tab, it's, it's closer to the left side than the right side. You just need to go in. So I'm gonna go to the rotated header and rather than it being 15, I might change that to be about 32, whatever, right? So you can now have it looking a certain particular way with your wording bang in the middle. Hey, look, I hope this helps. The code for this is in the description. This took a lot of trial and error. A lot of trial and error. Um, but it, it works. Um, I hope you like, subscribe, share, and follow. And yes, there are other ways, but I hope this helps you to have a bit of fun. And it is simple code. You know, it's not mind boggling and it is just using columns. So go ahead and have fun. Take care. I'll see you soon.